Welcome. Uh, my name is Tero Ayala, and uh, this presentation is about Qt pair management. And this pair management is an API for controlling the system connectivity, especially on mobile devices. How many of you were in Markus Ketz basic networking presentation earlier today? Okay, quite a few, so then you should already know the basics. He covered those in a couple of sentences. This presentation is also entry-level presentation, so we are not going to go to too much detail. Unless you have questions, then I can, can try to answer those and find maybe somebody else to answer. I don't think that this will take the whole hour, so we will have plenty of time for Q&A also after the talk and a small demo. And in case you do want to ask a question, I guess you know the drill by now, so wait for the microphone, and then also the people watching this video later on will hear the question. Okay. A little about me. Uh, I'm Teraela, like said, from Finland. I'm working as a product manager in the Qt organization. I've been working for Nokia for about 12 years in various roles and uh, for this Qt mobility now since December 2010. And uh, we have been doing mostly these uh, BIM APIs, contacts organizer, and then system information, and well, you can see it on the slide, but also the pair API, which used to be a mobility API as well. My interest is on the use cases that our APIs have and the usability of the APIs in general, so I would very much like to hear your feedback as well on those. And uh, during this talk, or then offline afterwards. Here's the agenda for today. Why to have this pair API in the first place? And uh, what can you do with that? And how this, does it relate to the bigger pizza? So when you leave, I hope everybody then knows uh, what classes are involved and what those do, and why you should use them. Okay. Mobile devices are a bit different uh, than desktops, so you tend to be interested in the cost of having the network connection up. The cost could be data charges if you don't have a flat rate plan, or then battery life will just be that much shorter with the network on. Also, mobile devices have these special net access points uh, for streaming and so forth, and uh, you need to maybe take those into consideration when choosing which connection your application actually uses then. Also, especially on Symbian, you could have several network connections active at the same time, so that affects the picture as well a bit. On the desktop, on the other side, they tend to be always online, or at least you think so, and uh, basically don't care that much about the issue, just have your application uh, open a network connection, and that's it. But uh, the pair API can be used also in desktops on some cases at least. Any questions so far? I guess not, so then let's check what you can actually do with this API. These are the main use cases that came to my mind and also are documented. You might invent as creative developers some extra ones, but let's go through these. So uh, the simplest use case, I, I think, is this checking online or offline state. You can use uh, these APIs to do that. Then you can also 
have the up-to-date list of network connections available. Uh, and on Symbian, at least, you can then also choose to connect to any of those if they are in a correct state. And uh, you can also then monitor what happens on those network interfaces, start and stop those with uh, the right capabilities, and also manage uh, network session on those interfaces. Uh, one of the more interesting use cases is this roaming. And on this context, it doesn't mean roaming to upward, uh, like I'm here now with my Finnish SIM card, and it's roaming here. In this context, it means that you hand over the connection from, for example, 3G to the Wi-Fi, and your application needs to cope with that. That tends to happen quite a lot in a mobile device nowadays. Uh, then one use case that is not covered by these APIs, uh, which I want to just to highlight a bit, is to create totally new network configurations and store those into the access point list that you can't do at the moment. Okay. Any questions on the use cases? No. Let's then check uh, the actual classes that form the pair API. So there aren't that many of those. You have the network configuration manager and the network configuration and session. Now, the, like I said, pair is a network interface. If those are uh, of an equal, uh, then the network configuration itself is the one access point that is bound to that network interface. It's an identifier, basically, for then using in uh, other parts of the API in the network session, so it doesn't have all the details that uh, uh, the access point actually has. And then the network session is the one that actually opens you, your network interface and monitors is it up or down and so forth. Yep. Then let's check a couple of code snippets, uh, how to implement these use cases. Uh, they are not necessarily the most polished ones, but should solve the kind of quick, quickest way maybe to do these things. So we have this checking online and offline status. It's one line of code. And this is online will give you true if uh, there's even one access point uh, reporting that it's active. Listing the network interfaces, that's a bit more tricky. You need to usually first uh, update the access point list uh, to be sure that all the states and access points are correct ones. And you call the update, get the signal about the completed update. After that, then get all the configurations. Then you have those, can do whatever with the list then. OK, monitoring the interfaces then. Well, that could be an interesting use case if you want to keep track how much data is being transferred over the in interface, making sure that cost doesn't accumulate too much, maybe, or how long has the interface been up. We also have some other APIs that kind of uh, give similar information in the mobility side on system info. Uh, later on, I can show you that in the example app I have. OK, 
Okay, uh, if no questions about that, so then let's set this starting and stopping the network interface. That's uh, quite easy. So when you have a configuration you want to connect to that one, you give it to a network session and open that, uh, then the interface will come up after a while. Stopping, on the other hand, requires uh, then more. Uh, so in Symbian, you can stop the whole network interface. So whatever applications there were using that, will also lose their uh, network access. So that's uh, why it requires uh, the network control capability. And uh, that isn't available with the self-signing uh, in the SDK. In the N9, uh, the default configuration will be the, uh, the uh, user choice, and on Symbian, it's usually the internet uh, service network. We can check those soon. Okay, managing network sessions then. Uh, if the platform in question supports this uh, system session, then it gives track of uh, how much uh, sessions are active on a network interface and makes sure that the interface doesn't close by accident until uh, the last client has left. And uh, so that's what the session is good for. Uh, this uh, example code here from the, from the top, this is not, of course, the same. Those are snippets from here and there, but the top part is from an uh, example we have on the Qt SDK, the uh, Fortune client, I believe. Uh, so it check, uh, first it takes a configuration it has saved, and then if that's not in, available anymore, then it gets the default configuration. And once the, it then gets the uh, open signal, it will save the configuration for later use. Okay, the last use case is then this roaming. So this is from the Symbian docs. Uh, a picture devices on a, a cellular network finds out that, hey, there's a nice Wi-Fi network available, and would be much cheaper to use that, so let's switch the connection over. And uh, OK, if we are having a platform that has application-level roaming support, then uh, you have more control what happens in this case. Uh, but the, I think nowadays more common uh, case would be to use the forced roaming so then you don't have anything else to do but to notice that now the connection is broken and uh, do whatever you need to do in your application to uh, get the uh, connection up again. But if in the application level roaming case uh, in Symbian, uh, you can subscribe to this signal uh, that, hey, now there would be a much better configuration here. And uh, once you get that, you can then <coughs> start doing decisions on the uh, proposal. So if you ignore, then you won't be transferred to the new access point. OK, then that might cause trouble for you if the change was due to signal uh, strength getting low or something. Or then you choose to migrate. That doesn't mean yet that the uh, handover happens, it means that you can start testing. After the new configuration activated sig uh, signal that is this configuration now good, can, I, can my application use it? And once you have tested it, then you say accept and 
the previous access point gets deleted. And uh, I think cu currently in Symbian and all the platforms, we have the IP address will change in this handover. So basically, uh, whatever protocol you are using and uh, so on, so you need to then open a new connection there. Uh, the API itself has some is seamless parameter, which would tell that is, it see, is there a virtual IP address that is used but uh, I don't think we support it in any platform, actually. Any questions about the application level roaming? There, could you wait for the microphone? Is there a way to influence uh, uh, which uh, configuration is preferred? For example, we are, you have uh, different networks, and some stuff is uh, available in this network, and some stuff is available in the other network, and when you switch, uh, your connection is completely gone because uh, your, your host is, is not available there. Is there any uh, possibility to, to uh, check this or to, to uh, bring this knowledge into the, the algorithm? Uh, yeah, so uh, according to my understanding, uh, this signal comes based on the system settings. And then well, you, you can influence it by testing the new connection and uh, can ignore that. But uh, that's about it. Of course, with a system like this, you could uh, yourself initiate the roaming to some. So you can monitor whatever access points are available and then choose to initiate the ro roaming yourself. So that's possible in Symbian. Okay, then let's check the different capabilities that the uh, network configuration managers have in various platforms we are supporting. So this is, these are also in the documentation, of course. But uh, the uh, first one, can start and stop interfaces, is quite self-descriptive already. So that means that you can open a closed connection and stop it when you want. And the backends that uh, claim to support that are uh, the Kahneman, which is on Linux desktops, uh, network manager as well. ICD is the backend from the N9 and native Wi-Fi in Windows. And then there's the Symbian, obvious. Uh, the direct connection routing uh, capability uh, means that in Symbian, when you can have these multiple connections open at the same time, uh, if you use that, it means that all your network traffic will go to a specific access point and not by accident via some other one. So that might uh, cause your application to malfunction. And uh, yeah, system session support meant that the uh, system gives a reference count of all of those uh, sessions on the interface and then make sure that the uh, it's open as long as needed. Application level roaming we already covered. Then forced roaming, that's available in many more platforms. Basically all of those, which means just that the system can change the access point whenever it wants to. And for you, that just shows up like any other connection loss and you reopen then and everything just should work again. Of course, if you are using a service that uh, uh, requires authentication and whatever, uh, you need to do all that again, probably. Then the data statistics uh, is what, what is needed for that uh, byte counters and active times. Uh, it's available in those three platforms. And uh, yeah, network session required. If you uh, have that capability, it means that you shouldn't do any network uh, act activity in your application before you have an open session. And uh, okay, it's required on the mobile platforms, 
but not on desktops. There's, there are some exceptions to that on Symbian at least. Uh, so a TCP socket will open the default pair, but then it doesn't have all these reference counts and so on. Uh, any questions about these? Uh, where you run, run into these is uh, uh, when you list those access points, you can then kind of, uh, oh, can, uh, at runtime, you can find out that what cap capabilities that platform which you are on has. Okay. That was about uh, plain pair. I guess we could switch uh, to comparing uh, using that to using the network access manager, which you heard about earlier, maybe already, in uh, P Peter Hartmann's presentation and also on Markus Götz's. Uh, so with the pair API, you have these access to the network configurations. And uh, you can do decisions based on the parameters there. And uh, you usually need uh, the network session if you want to uh, do anything else than HTTP or FTP. Uh, but then also all the roaming stuff needs to be done by you. While the network access manager, if you don't do anything uh, extra, it will open the default configuration and you can use the HTTP FTP in there, and it will also accept the roaming for you. So if it has any packets on the buffer, so it will send those then via the new route. I don't think it necessarily will work for your application uh, that easy. Again, it depends on what you are using it for. But that's the basic difference between these. But then. Also, in the network access manager, you could uh, use a non-default configuration. You can uh, use the uh, pair APIs to select one configuration and give it to the network access manager. And uh, a special case of using uh, uh, se selecting the configuration in network access manager is if you would want to have some traffic going via another configuration and some via another, then uh, before queued for the date, you need to basically delete the previous QNAM and then uh, at least on Symbian that is, and then uh, open a new one with the different configuration or then you need to do a child processes and that sort of things. But it's fixed in queued for the date, so then you can have uh, many of those QNAMs to different configurations at the same time. Okay. Uh, you might wonder that uh, why are there so many pair APIs? If you check the documentation, well, the current uh, documentation actually for Qt Mobility doesn't mention that anymore, but it used to be there uh, since Qt Mobility 1.0, I think. And uh, that was because the Qt 4.6 wasn't aware of these uh, issues at all, and it was implemented as a part of the Qt Mobility API then. But nowadays, in, since Qt 4.7, it's integrated in, into Q network. Uh, and the only reason uh, you would want to use the old one is if you have a platform that still uses Qt 4.6. And uh, as far as I know, the only one is this S63 edition. And it's a bit uh, dangerous to use that with Qt network access manager because then the Roaming features don't work. <coughs> also, uh, there have been a couple of changes to the API 
to make it a bit cleaner, but it's still compatible backwards. And but also it's deprecated, so some bug fixes have been going to the new one, but not to the old one. So that should give an incentive to use the Qt uh, 7 pair. And it doesn't require too many changes to the code, so you would just take the pair out of the mobility configuration and uh, change your code so that it picks up uh, the proper Qt 7 pair. And OK, if you don't use any other mobility APIs, then you can uh, get also the mobility out of the config in the dot profile. Any questions about that? I guess not, so let's check what we have left. There's the migration to Network Access Manager. So you have, might have been using QHTTP or whatever with the old uh, API. But like I was saying already earlier, it's for HTTP you should use the QNAM and uh, more or less everything works the same but if you do these few changes. So you can use the set configuration and then uh, if, if QNAM is the only thing you need. Obviously, you can remove the Q network systems from the code. And uh, also, you don't need to bother about the bearers if uh, you are fine with the default connection. And this uh, network access manager will internally open network systems whenever it needs to. So. You don't then have any control over that. Uh, from your application point of view, it just looks uh, in the first time that uh, getting the first network reply takes a really long time. Uh, and it can be a long time in a mo mobile device, depending on what the configuration ends up being. And uh, with the QNAM, the network is stopped when uh, it's deleted or after two minutes with no requests in some platforms, meaning the N9. Okay. Then we still have one topic about Qt Quick. That's the default programming paradigm now. Use it. Uh, use Qt Quick. So how does this pair then fit with that? Well, you have the uh, declarative access man uh, manager factory that was mentioned also in the Marcus's presentation. Uh, that gives you some flexibility to select what uh, configurations are used and so forth. Or then you need to uh, fiddle with uh, exposing your own C++ code into the Qt Quick side. And when doing these network access manager factories, you need to be careful uh, with, with the code there because uh, the QML engine will do those in multiple threads and so forth, so it does need to be re-entrant. Okay, now would be time for a couple of questions. I can then show from the device uh, how, what kind of use cases uh, can be done with these APIs. Okay, there. Can I get the microphone again? Thank you. Um, First, uh, my question is, I probably missed it. Uh, is that API available on desktop platforms as well? Uh, which one, the network configuration um, management, this one? Beer control. Yes, it is, but it's not used by default. Uh, for example, this uh, uh, network access manager doesn't use it on desktop unless you 
start setting your own configurations and so on. So even if you would take away all the pair of plugins from desktop, it would still be able to download. Mm -hmm. But it is available, so that's why you have these various desktop-related backends mm -hmm. in there. Uh, so said at least some of the use cases are possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, then in the first example, uh, you've shown you've shown uh, is online method um, used to determine if connection is online. Uh, what actually does it determine? It, it determines the state of the carrier, or it determines that TCP/IP or TCP/IP stack is running on top of that uh, interface and it's available. No, it's checking that is the carrier available. So if you would want to start doing some TCP IP over that, it would be possible immediately. Mm -hmm. So that's what it does. Um, and also, <laughs> sorry, too many questions probably. Um, if it's available on desktop platforms, uh, obviously the next question is uh, what kind of permissions will be required to control the interfaces and um, to use that API? Uh, well, that depends on the platform you are in. So this obviously doesn't have any permissions itself. So it's then talking to, for example, core WLAN in the Mac. Mm -hmm. and, uh, well, if whatever that can do, this can then do, but nothing more. Mm -hmm. And how it will react if there is uh, insufficient uh, privileges? Will it just fail or? Uh, I think you will get then some uh, error signal from that or message. Okay, thank you. Mm. So, uh, does everybody agree with that assessment or are there kind of more knowledgeable people about the desktop uh, usage of these? I guess not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so maybe I could then just, this is a really simple application, so let's check if I can get it running here. Okay, so you have the online statistic. Nice, seems to work. Uh, let me disconnect this one so we see that does it really detect the signal. It did. I don't now, now have a German SIM card, so I, didn't, uh, I can't demonstrate any of those real handover cases with this, but at least the simple is online thing works. Okay, then if I list the available networks with this, uh, it shows that, okay, now there's no networks available since we just disconnected. And on this N9, if I uh, refresh the list calling the update configurations, it will automatically uh, return then new network configurations for these new access points found. So it, the, uh, I could refresh that. Let's see if there are any new ones. No, but if I create here ad hoc access point, so we can see, does it detect that? While, while it can do this, uh, it can't, like I said, create totally new ones that you would have some uh, access point management application that you develop yourself. So uh, you can't use this API to store those access points. Yeah, there it is offline at the moment, but let's see if it becomes available if I at least do this. So quite simple. Uh, I plan to extract this uh, 
kind of the essence of this example application, the snippets on, for the DevNet. Currently, it's a, a bit too messy for putting uh, uh, available anywhere, so it might take a while before I can do that. Okay, it can't co connect to that ad hoc network now, so let's forget about that and select something else. No, then not. Okay. And now it became available again. Then, like I was saying, we also have the uh, cute mobility APIs for getting some information about network statuses. And the advantage of using those, if they happen to work for your use case, would be that they have ready-made QML bindings. Uh, so this one is using that to show, OK, I'm roaming on the uh, 3G network and cell ID of this place, and uh, OK, the Wi-Fi network, I mean. So this uh, cute mobility system information API, network information element, uh, can direct it from QML. The, these things and many others as well. Then finally, there was the monitoring uh, use case, uh, showing how long this uh, wireless interface has been up and so forth. And uh, OK, now, was it yesterday or the day before we got the official Spotify client uh, for the N9? And uh, that uses also the Pair API to do various th things. So you can uh, set there that does it download the offline tracks only on uh, Wi Fi or also in the uh, 3G network and so forth. Can show those settings maybe, but it will be a bit difficult to see because it's going to be sideways. <laughs> yeah, so it can force an offline mode, and then there's this setting of does it synchronize over 2G? And, uh, other settings as well uh, that you can do with uh, the Pair API. Okay, I guess we could get the slides back now. Um, not that one, but that. Yep. So, any questions based on the demo? If not, I could share my contact details. So like I said, if you then after this got interested and go and test how does the network uh, configuration manage and these work, and notice that, hey, this documentation isn't up to date or something, feel free to contact me. I'm always interested in hearing what's uh, troubling the developers with this. And uh, also, if you. Uh, proposing new features, so I want to know something about the uh, Qt5 side of things, so there's the new Qt project mailing list for that. These uh, discussion forums are mainly for the old, uh, old API, obviously, still. And then you have the usual Qt documentation about these. Uh, and uh, it has several examples as well integrated on the Qt SDK itself. And this documentation also is there. Uh, there's an example application called Pero Monitor, which I recommend you check out. Uh, it's, uh, the problem is that it's QWidget based and doesn't work on, too well on the N9 and doesn't look good anymore on the Symbian, uh, but it gives you anyway quite a good picture of how the uh, APIs are used. Uh, 
I guess that was it, uh, all I had to say. So if you still uh, now come up with a question, please ask. Okay, there is one. Uh, is there a possibility, uh, I hope not, that you can activate an interface from an application on the N9? Uh, no, in the N9, the, it depends on the settings that the, you have configured. So the ICD is quite strict in uh, handling all the uh, configurations itself. So uh, it either, uh, if, if you have set some access point to be automatically connectable, so then, yeah, it will be opened automatically if the application asks. But then if it's on manual, then it will pop up the dialog. We can conclude then this. Thank you.